So, how do I change people's concept of space? And how our ideas are shaped by it? I mean, I can sketch it out on a piece of paper like this, but, you know, the problem with this is, you know, this space is bounded. You know, I've got the edge of the paper. There's no depth. I mean, this is, you know. And then, what does this paper have to do with this paper? I mean, the problem fundamentally here is that, you know, I'm worried about the idea. But paper kind of forces me to worry about the outline first. So I need to put this up here Oh, I've created a mess. This is, this needs a better tool. I mean, this worked for hundreds of years. And it's nice because, you know, there's a certain permanence to this. But of course, if it's gone, if I lose it, it's gone. And I have to figure out how to store it, preserve it, keep it from, you know, catching fire, things like that. But it, the important thing here is that this changes the way the narrative works in this space. I mean, I have to, you know, go from top to bottom, you know, item one, idea, item two, space. Yeah, so how am I going to tell the story of space? or in particular the story of this space, the space of ideas or the space of paper. And then what if I get it wrong? I mean, what if I need to think about this in a different way? What if this is a, instead of being a one-dimensional thing that goes like this, what if it's a two-dimensional thing where I've got something over here and over here, and then I need to relate it and then relate it back over here? You know, it's got to be a better way. So now I've moved this information into a different space. Now, this changes the game a little bit. For one thing, I can move things around here. I can add new text just like that and delete it. Check my spelling. Um, but what that means, though, is that I can suddenly take this idea that used to be, you know, where you have to not have to worry so much about the outline. You know, I can have a general sense of where I'm going with that, but I can move most of the outlining down here into the editing and then focus on these two things right here, which is, you know, struggling with the idea a little bit. Um, I can also take an idea from somewhere else and use that as a way of you know playing with it this was a very rough idea that I that I wrote in a different way and move it over here hmm okay and now I can use this as a way of you know uh, editing the text as I'm working through this so the idea and the story become a fluid environment. And I can just worry about throwing that idea together without having to worry about any of this stuff and then come back to this later when it's time to fix things. I like this. I've solved some problems. I can also bring in people to help me with this. and and uh, share the link and say, hey, what do you think of this idea? You want to make some comments, because you can, with the Google Docs, you can make comments and stuff. But I still have one problem here. The idea is still, how I get to this idea, how I play for this, play with this idea, at the end of the day, it's still happening primarily inside my head. I'm not able to share this with um, that part of the process with anybody else other than myself which is a good thing, but, and it gives me a lot of flexibility to play inside my head, but 
What if I want to get a clearer understanding? What if I want to look at the problem a little bit differently? I mean, you remember the diagram with the circles and stuff. What if I want to do something like that? I can't do that as easily here. I mean, I could put graphics in here. It's not that hard. Um, but they're, they're in the linear flow of uh, the document. So if I do... in here um, bang so that's easy enough but it's still in this linear flow and I still have that problem of top to bottom ideas and that really conditions how you think and the kind of ideas you can have so what if I start with this idea of a graphic and just lay it out on a board and in a way, this is a giant piece of paper that I can scribble all over. I'm not kind of dictated by that that linear transformation. Um, this gives, opens up some new opportunities um, because now I can think about how things relate to one another. So when it comes to my spaces here, how much time do I have to think through this idea? How much time do I have to play with it? Because I can now take this idea of you know, space is a place where ideas meet, where technologies happen. And say, okay, what other things has to happen for that to work right? Um, and in order, and, and so introduce some of the different ideas here to the idea of space. One is time. You know, I've, I've got to have, what is the shape of the time I have to work with things? Can I change the dynamics of of uh, uh, how I'm working on a problem from a time perspective. That sounds kind of weird, but we'll talk more about that in a future video. And then what happens to those ideas after we have them? I mean, how do we scale them? How do they relate to the rest of the world? Because there's an awful lot of really good ideas in the world. But if I have this great idea and just throw it out there and everybody ignores it, is it really worth anything? And you can see I can make these connections here very easily. Um, by simply, you know, pulling out a box and saying, you know, uh, space is a technology. And I can just free associate here. I can say, um, you know, what the time is, you know, or is everybody working on this together, or is this like an asynchronous thing? And the other cool thing about this, like the Google Docs, this is a program called Miro, I can share this out to a group of people as well, and we can all be working on this simultaneously, or asynchronously, uh, as the case may be, so that, you know, you can leave it up and have people come back and play with the board uh, after everybody else has left which is kind of a cool thing. So now I can think about these times. I can make the ex my ideas much more explicit. explicit. My, time, my, my brain uh, pathways can be laid out here, both for me to see and reevaluate and go, okay, you know what, you're really forcing yourself down this path, and maybe you should consider these alternatives, and maybe you should think you know, laterally, which is a really powerful tool for imagination. You know, how to say, for instance, an airplane come into play here. You know, how do you, uh, how, how does an airplane shape the space and time uh, that you have, you know, to do certain tasks? Maybe not idea shaping, although who knows, you can get a lot of inspiration from the clouds. Uh, but how can you develop a, uh, a sense of space that's related back to an airplane? Um, you know, you have your constraints, you have the wings, you have to have lift, you have to have, to have engine power, all these things have to go together, you have to have fuel, and um, that very cons very much constrains your space uh, in terms of, you know, how you think about any problem. Every, every problem has this basic problem of, of how do you, you know, how do you get it somewhere, how do you lift it somewhere, um, how much persistence does it have, that's the same as fuel. So this is a way of doing, what I'm doing here is a lateral thinking exercise a little bit. And I can draw connections as well, you know. Um,
back to this. Uh, and I can actually, I can annotate the line. Of course, it's teeny tiny. This is one of the silly things where it could be better. Um, but you get the idea here, you know. Fuel equals persistence ideas, you know. That's kind of fun. And when you get a lot of people working on stuff together, you can uh, get some really interesting ideas. Here's something I put together for um, thinking about it. Something I put together for one of the groups at Shaping EDU. And, you know, we're looking at working on this. We may or may not use this in the end, but it's a, you know, brainstorming tool where everybody can get in and think about different ways in which educational credentialing might work. So, to sum up, some quick takeaways. Um, any technology is a space. I mean, they, Paper creates a certain space. Word processors create a certain space. Concept mapping creates a certain space. VR concept mapping, which you know, is yet another layer on top of this uh, that can, might be a future video uh, subject, also is a space. And all those change the operational things of your task, you know, what you're trying to do. And in this particular instance, you know, I'm worried about being able to exchange ideas. And so you could see all, all those different spaces constrain my exchange of ideas. It also shapes the flow of ideas, how well you can share those out and, and how well they persist and so on and so forth uh, are all examples of the way space uh, shapes the, the flow of ideas. And last thought, very important to leave you with here, is that, you know, I like spaces that uh, become invisible, where the humans in those spaces can interact, where I can create um, my, you know, looking back to photography, uh, my key thing there is to make my equipment invisible so I can become part of the photograph and take those pictures. And a uh, good space, i.e. in this case the space is the camera, gets out of the way of the, the larger idea space of the photo photograph. So that's it for the first one here. Um, subscribe and like if you want to uh, continue finding out about these as I plug them out slowly but surely. Uh, there's some notes in the description on how to find uh, my books as well as some other sources on this. And I uh, hope this was useful for you in terms of uh, messing with your own idea space. Until next time, goodbye.